Well, hello, everyone. Um, we're going to get started with today's demonstration. Thank you, everyone, for connecting today um, through this LAMOS live demo. Um, I would like to get started with some introductions. Um, so, um, my name is Patty Celidon. I am the LAMOS administrator at Pro Literacy. I am one of the course developers working on LEAMOS, and I also provide the customer support to any of the current um, programs that are connected with LEAMOS and provide also to any uh, potential programs that want to come on board. With us today, we have Alicia Suskin, our Pro Literacy Project Manager, who oversees the product management and strategy. And we also have with us Jennifer Vecarelli, who is our marketing and communications manager, who will be monitoring our, um, your questions that you might have throughout this webinar. Um, in this presentation, um, I will go over um, the agenda of what we will cover. Um, we're gonna share with you a brief history of LEAMOS. I will show you what the course lessons look like and display what the administrator features are available um, with the course. I would like to just make a note that the presentation is in English, but you will hear the lesson audio in Spanish as well as some of the text. I recommend just for you to increase your volume just to listen to the audio when that comes up. Everyone will be muted during the presentation, but you can type your questions in the chat box at any time. We will have some time during the end of the presentation to answer your questions. This demo is being recorded, so you will also we'll make it available to you. So now I would like to turn it over to Alicia, and let's learn about LEAMOS. Hi. Hello, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining us today and uh, learning about LEAMOS. We're really excited to have um, this product be part of ProLiteracy. Um, LEAMOS was created 27 years ago to address the pressing need for basic Spanish literacy instruction among the Latino community. It was observed that most non-literate Spanish speakers who enrolled in ESL programs found the classes to be difficult and they were struggling to keep up and many of them eventually were dropping out of those said ESL programs. So, LAMOS was um, developed and taught in small groups, primarily by VISTA volunteers, and it eventually evolved to a, to a traditional classroom format by a trained facilitator. In 2004, the LAMOS course content was adopted online and used by many organizations throughout the state of California, and they set up a model that was tested in various deliver delivery formats and demonstrated so that it can be replicated. As of December 2017, LAMOS um, ProLiteracy became the home of LAMOS with a focus on expanding it throughout the United States and Latin American countries. So I want to talk to you a bit about why LAMOS is needed. Data shows that illiteracy exists in the United States and over 1.6 million Spanish speaking adults in the United States cannot read or write in any language. These adults have difficulty engaging in English classes, helping their children with homework, and or succeeding in the workplace. Um, next, I'm going to highlight the, the LAMOS adult learner profile a bit, um, which may reflect your community's population. So LAMOS is for adults who have little to no formal education. Most of the time, they depend on others to fill out forms, interpret information at the expense of their own privacy. And despite it all, they manage to navigate through a written and tech-driven society. So although the LAMOS course was designed for adults in mind, um, I do want to let you guys know that middle and high school age students have also taken the LAMOS course successfully. So why should your program use LAMOS or why should anyone use LAMOS? LAMOS offers a learning platform where the students learn at their own pace with a virtual instructor. There are different literacy program models. Um, Patty will go into that a bit, but LAMOS leverages technology. 
Leamos is flexible and cost-effective in minimizing the one-on-one -on -one tutoring and instructional hours. It's been tested and formally evaluated, and it provides a double impact that it teaches the ABCs and introduces learners to digital literacy. Um, I'm going to turn it over to Patty, who's going to briefly share a learner's testimonial and then dive more into the actual content of Leamos and give a demonstration. Okay, thank you so much, Alicia. Um, I would like to know if you can view my screen now. Okay, I think so. Um, so as you can see in your screen, this is the writing of a 32-year-old male from Guatemala who shared his story of why he was not able to attend school in this country and how much he struggled by being illiterate. And thanks to Lamos, he says, you know, in his testimonial that he can now sign his name, he can read signs, and he can write, as we can see it on this note. But now let's see how Leamos is structured and what helped Jorge to become literate. And I will start by sharing with you that Leamos um, is based on the teaching methodology, which is partially based on popular education. It has a concept from the Brazilian educator, Pablo Freire. Each lesson starts with a common word, which Freire referred to as a generative word that has a capacity to lead to new words. The lessons are all divided by sections, starting from simple syllables and builds vocabulary, as you can see here in the first module. This is just a sample. The lessons, um, each module measures the learner's ability to recognize syllables, words, and sentence structure, and builds reading fluency it, the course includes um, a section in tracing the letters and practicing on worksheets. And one of the questions that we often get is like, how would I know if Leamos is appropriate for my Spanish speaking students, you know, that they're serving? Well, one of the ways is to screen them, um, screen the individuals who you already know that have less than two years of education and that's by giving them this diagnostic tool. We have this available and we can provide it to you in case before um, the course is even acquired just to start um, screening those students that are gonna be potential learners of Leamos. The course is web-based, so there's no need for software. All you need is to have um, the latest browser. It's available with any of the browsers. And the learners can use their computers, laptops, Chrome notebooks, and even now it's available on mobile devices. So if they have their cell phone or tablet, it could work on both platforms, either Android or Apple. Student workbook contains close to 200 pages and it's provided in a PDF format available to print. The staff oversight is minimal and needed only while the course is in session. The course normally takes an average of 150 hours to complete. The course can be guided by a dedicated tutor or because the course does include the virtual instructor. So all you need is to provide someone who can be a volunteer or it could be a paid staff that can play that role of a tutor or a facilitator. But here are some of the responsibilities that we see for a tutor's role. First will be to administer or to review the student diagnostic, the one that you saw earlier for screening. Of course, login, as you can see in the picture. It takes a couple of tries in the beginning um, for the login because the login is the only place in the entire course where the keyboard is used. So it does need a little bit of guidance the first couple of tries. Three, it's to practice. The tutor will help when it comes to practice the reading and to ensure the comprehension. Four, it will be to monitor the written exercises on the worksheets and to be able to administer the final evaluation. A tutor is included, um, the tutor guide, we do have a guide available and it's included with the course. Um, the thing that about the tutors is that they do need to be fluent in Spanish 
and be able to speak Spanish at least at a high school level. One tutor can assist up to three learners at the same time. It all depends on their experience. While some students are reviewing the online course, um, others can be working on the worksheets. So that's how we see the, the ratio of one tutor to three students. So here's what the um, navigation panel looks like. Um, as you can see, the control buttons on the lesson screens are very common to what the learners will see on their home devices, which is like CD players or DVD players. So it only has three buttons. They can move back to the previous lesson if they're on one of the lessons or if they already started the lesson, it will take them to the beginning of that lesson, play and pause. Each lesson, as I mentioned, is divided into sections. So there are a total of six sections on each one of the lessons. Um, these include all the audio instructions. At the beginning of each lesson, a new letter is introduced. And in this case, because this is lesson one, section one, you can see all the vowels that are being reviewed. So you will now listen to a very brief introduction of the lesson. As I mentioned at the beginning, the audio is in Spanish and hopefully you have your volume up and I'll also turn mine up just a little more. Okay, it's to the max. Okay, so let me play that for you. Nuestra primera lección se llama Educación. En esta lección aprenderemos a leer y a escribir las cinco vocales. En la lección de hoy, la palabra educación contiene las cinco letras vocales. Aprenderemos bien las vocales para poder avanzar en nuestra meta de aprender a leer y a escribir. Observe las letras vocales que están en la palabra educación. Primero está la vocal minúscula E. Después le sigue la vocal minúscula U. Después la vocal minúscula A. La siguiente es la vocal minúscula I. Y la última es la vocal minúscula O. Ahora, observemos las vocales minúsculas escritas solas en la pantalla. Ok, I will pause it there. What I really wanted to share with you is the pace of the virtual instructor and also show you how the letters are highlighted as the instructor speaks and teaches those letters. In section two, and the reason why you know this is section two, because you're always gonna have the lesson highlighted on the top, but also the smaller number on the bottom left will be the section number. So this is our section two. All the section twos will introduce the set of syllables to be reviewed. As you can see here, they also get highlighted as the instructor speaks. This is section three. Each lesson includes a writing section of the letter being reviewed. The virtual instructor guides the learner how to write the letter. Once they see the video, they're playing the little video and it will show how the hand moves in tracing that letter. The the learner is instructor to ask their tutor for the corresponding worksheet at this point. Once they review the lesson in which they write, it is important that they immediately get their worksheet and start practicing on their own how to write that letter. Learners practice, practice listening and reading two forms of short syllables and words as shown on these images. As you can see here, this is a different set of syllables. And right away in the first lesson, or in every lesson in section five, they start practicing and putting words together with the syllables they just learned. And lastly, students will learn to read and write sentences. At least three new sentences are introduced in every lesson. And to sum it up, this unique course builds each lesson on the previous one. In addition, there are practice exercises similar to quizzes in every section that we call reinforcement exercises. And the reason for that is because a lot of times when the student knows that there will be a test or a quiz, you know, they tend to get nervous. So everything that needs to be evaluated as a form of a evaluation, we call them exercises for the students. 
So there is a, a reinforcement exercise here in this exercise. Um, and also, let me just get ahead of myself. We do have a trial available, so you can try it out and see what these um, exercises look like. There are letters that come up, syllables or words, sentence, depending on the section that they just reviewed, they will be evaluated to make sure that they learn that section correctly. Um, they do, if they answer the majority correct, it will ask them to move forward and congratulate them that they're ready for the next section. But that's why it's checking every section before, and that's the only way that they move forward. As you can see, there's no moving forward or advancing the lessons. So they do have to go section by section, and these are the exercises that evaluate whether they learned the section correctly or if they didn't. If they didn't, it will say, once they start clicking, this is a clickable interactive exercise. If they don't click on the correct answers, it will tell them that they will need, they will be moved back to the previous section to review that section once again. And at the end of that module, it will have a results page. It will show every lesson and reinforcement exercise ticket taken for every section. It says how many questions there are, how many answers were correct, and it will have a punctuation. So this score really shows whether it was 100 or 80. So if any of them have less than 80%, they will have an opportunity to retake that exercise with the clickable button here on the right, and that's how they will be allowed to go back and retake it in order to get their 100%. If they don't get 80% or better, the module will not advance. So this entire results page have to be completed with scores in order to move modules forward. And automatically the course will move them to the next module. But after the lessons, the module that they will see, it's actually um, some exercises, which I'll take you and show you just in a bit. But I want to show you first what the landing page looks like for all the students. As soon as the student logs in, they will see this welcome page. There are tutorials available. As you can see, once they log in, they will have a, an orientation video that it will give them the welcome and tell them what they're going to be expecting to see throughout the course. And it also has a mouse tutorial. Um, they can review these as many times as they need um, before and during the course. The login tutorial that I mentioned here, this login tutorial will be available on the screen before they log in because it's important to them to learn how to log in before they actually type in their username and password. But that will be available um, as soon as we update our login page because we're making a dedicated LAMOS page for them. So. At the time, um, I make it available through email before they log in. So when they log into the course, they will see the, num the name of the lesson that they're logging in. So that says ejercicios de modulo. It will have lessons depending on what module they're in. But the student, all they have to do when they log in is click on Inicio, which also means launch, and that will launch the course for them. And here are the module exercises that I was telling you about. The course includes these module exercises where the students will be evaluated. These include four different reading passages throughout the course. There's dictation, um, the dictation exercises where they will listen to the audio and they will write on their notebook the words and sentences they hear and self-correct because the screen will show them the correct spelling of those words that they're writing. It also includes multiple choice and comprehension questions that you can see on the screenshot. The results are shown and narrated at the end of the module. So once they take these exercises, uh, they will see this page. Everything's narrated, but it's also guiding them to ask their tutor to come and take a look because it has many choices for them. If they received more than 80%, that means that they passed. But if it's less than 80%, they need to repeat it. So it has an option here to repeat the quiz. It also has an option just to check 
um, what which ones they got correct or incorrect. So the tutor gets to do this with the learner together. And here at the bottom, when they're doing the check, it will show which ones were correct and which ones were incorrect. And there's also an opportunity to print their results. As I previously stated, every section has a worksheet and it's part of the printable workbook that follows the same sequence as the online course. So once they open the workbook or the sheets, they will go based on the letters, syllables and words that they have learned on the lesson. So everything goes synchronized with the lesson and the workbook. There are module exercises, just like the one you saw previously with the multiple choice question. It is also necessary to do them on paper. And the reason for that is because as you can see on the second half, besides the multiple choice, there are some writing practice and this cannot be done unless it's done on paper. So online, they will do the reading comprehension, but on paper, it is necessary for them to start answering. And if you notice here, I know it's kind of small, but it says tutor. So all the instructions are guided for the tutor for them to guide the student or learner to answer the questions correctly. So they get to practice and they are tested on their writing skills as well. There is a final evaluation. So besides having nine module exercises or evaluation, in order for the student to complete the entire course, there is a final evaluation available. It is also online. They take all the comprehension pieces online and on paper, they will take all the writing pieces. So it will ask for some of the reading and writing, fill in the blanks, and there's more in the, um, multiple choice questions. Um, these include also some of the fill in the blanks and reading comprehension. All the course evaluations need to be taken on both formats, and there is a certificate of completion available at the end of the course. So we give you a template, we make that available, that when the student got to the end of the course, then that template of that certificate of completion is available to them. But also, we, this comes with a grid or a guide as for grading them and what score they get. And they do need to have and be able to pass with at least an 80% or better. Well, that is all that the student gets to see and cover throughout the Leamos course. What I, what I would like to do now before we jump to the next section is that I would like to review for all of you as administrators um, or as your coordinators for your organizations or libraries, what do you get as part of Leamos? So everything you saw, the, and, and you also get access to the course. So when you get access to the course, you get access to all the lessons and videos. But as an administrator, when I activate those rights um, and privileges on your account, you get to see on the welcome screen that there's an administrator resource tab and once you cl click on that, you will have access to get reports. You can get a curriculum details report, the student progress, and in case you need just to know how many hours they spent online taking the course, you can get that report as well. Um, how to pull one of these reports and how to get to that data, everything is given to you as a video tutorial. So that is available um, that I send by email with your access, with your password, and with all the instructions recorded and also on paper to have like a quick sheet next to you when you're pulling all this data or information. Um, there is two other pieces that you get as an administrator. You do get to enroll all of your students. So if you have more than one student enrolled or you would like to get subscriptions for maybe three or five or 10 students, you might also want to assign either yourself or assign a staff member that will help you do all the enrollments. Um, you have access to that with clicking on enroll students. What well, the information is gonna ask you, it's all the basic demographic. It's really up to you what type of information you want to enter, but the required fields are name, um, first name, last name, um, year of birth or birth year, 
and just the username and password that you want to assign to the student. All the other questions part of the enrollment are other demographic information about age, ethnicity, whether they went to school in the past or if they've been in this country for how many years. But it all depends on you, what you would like to extract on one of these reports and how much information or data you put in. So once the student is enrolled, there's like a second little step that needs to be done, which is to assign the course. And that we have instructions to as video and also as a worksheet, because every time that the student is enrolled, the course needs to be assigned to them as well. So now um, I would like to um, show you what all the subscriptions are. Um, just because I want to be able to finish all the information about the actual course, um, including the subscriptions, um, and then we can move on to answer all of the questions um, that you might have. So a subscription um, include a one-year access for every learner. A copy of the student workbook is provided along with the tutor guide. And the call support um, is included along with the training videos that I just mentioned and the handouts. The pricing for Leamos is shown here. I just want to highlight that if you purchase more than five subscriptions, uh, there are some savings per subscription. Each subscription for one individual learner, um, there like each subscription will be for every learner because that includes a unique username and password assigned to that student. All the purchase subscriptions need to be used within those 12 months. And in the case of any learners not continuing the course, because I always get the question, we understand that they are adult learners, life happens, sometimes they enrolled in the course, but they don't continue. So what happens to that subscription? Well, there are a few, um, two benchmarks that we consider that we can replace those subscriptions. One would be if the learner has been inactive for more than 60 days, or if you already know that they're not gonna come back, you let me know and I can deactivate that account and I can activate it for another student. But also it's very important that that one student um, did not complete more than the first module. Because if the student was able to attend and complete the first module and probably even some, then they already acquired enough literacy that they needed with the course. So let me just repeat that again. If the student was inactive for more than 60 days or they only did not complete all of module one, which is the first five lessons. So, um, Alicia, I'm not sure if you would like to um, jump in at this time. I know that um, this pricing was available to them um, at this discounted price. It's already discounted. But if you would like to tell us more about the cost and how it's being housed now about pro literacy. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so, not in this demo, but in others, some of the attendees have inquired about if we have membership pricing, and um, we don't have a special membership rate for Leamos, but um, for any of you that have never heard about Leamos until today, or it was acquired by Proliteracy, um, it used to be a product of a nonprofit organization in California called Central Latino for Literacy. And part of the reason is um, when we acquired Leamos, um, Central Latino was a member program of ours. And they unfortunately had to shut their doors, but they wanted to keep make sure that this program was still available for people to use. And as a larger organization, we wanted to make sure that this product is accessible to programs of really any size, any budget. Um, and so we were able to cut the price um, by more than 50% to try and make this um, as accessible um, you know, to your program as we could. And so that's why, like Patty said, it starts at $60 for one to four subscriptions. And then the cost does go down the more subscriptions you purchase. Um, if you have any type of financial limitations or questioning how many subscriptions you should buy, I would really encourage you to talk to reach out to Patty and talk about those price that pricing. 
Um, but we did um, reduce the rate significantly so that it would be accessible to our members. Um, and then, as Patty also mentioned previously, but Patty, yeah, if you want to go to the next slide, um, I was just going to say we do um, also have a three-week free trial um, for any of you um, to, to try, and I would encourage you um, to take advantage of that. I know that, um, Patty, you can speak on this a bit more if you have anything else to say, but we've had several programs reach out, and they're actually able to try the trial with a student that they think might benefit from Leamos and test out um, for three weeks to see, you know, if, if it's what that student needs. Um, and so we don't want you to have to commit to, to any pricing if, if you don't feel comfortable or confident in the program. So that's why we um, created that trial for you as well. Yes, thank you, Alicia. And that is correct. Um, the trial could be for you to be able to evaluate the course and see if it will meet the needs for your um, program. But also I have received requests and I can provide as um, many accounts as you need. Um, I have provided up to like maybe three or four accounts per program because they have a tutor, someone that will like to review it as well as the administrator. But we also have students. The, the students have tried out the course. And the good thing about this is that if they start the trial, and usually in three weeks, when the student is consistent and they do attend, let's say at least, because minimum, it will be three to five days a week where the student logs into the course for at least two hours every session. So if the student logs in at least three times a week, they will get to complete module one. I have seen the students complete module one with a free trial and they like it, the uh, program purchases it for them, and all they have to do is let me know, and that trial, once um, it ends, I just make it active, once it's purchased and acquired, and the student continues exactly on the lesson where they left off. So that's a really great benefit, and also once they continue or it's purchased, they do get the copy of the student workbook. So the only recommendation is that they can start with the workbook and or with a, no, a a notebook in the beginning would take notes of practicing the letters and then once it's purchased for them then that's when they get the student workbook um, so I would like to be able to answer some of the questions that you might have I know Jennifer will help us to read those questions that you typed in the chat box but also before we get to the questions I want to thank you all for um, staying with us to the end of this webinar um, feel free to contact me. My phone number is here on the screen, my email, phone number, and even the website um, where you can reach me. Um, if you're interested in a proposal, like Alicia said, um, send me an email. I do customized proposals. Sometimes you don't need like a five or 10, or maybe we can work some number in between. I can send proposals in case you need to have any information sent to like a higher superior or someone, you know, your supervisor um, at your program. So I can give you all the paperwork necessary for you to present Leamos to someone else. So, okay, Jennifer, I'm ready for any questions. Hi, Patty. Yeah, we um, actually have uh, several questions that have come through. Some of them are similar. So, um, Let's see. So the first one, Mary and Aaron asked a similar question. And um, so I'm just going to read Aaron's because hers was a bit it was more like twofold where Mary just asked part of it. Um, but they are wondering, is this program intending to teach literacy in Spanish, which then leads to confidence learning English or just literacy in Spanish as the end goal? OK, thank you for the question. Very good question. Um, this course, it is intended for Spanish literacy, but because a learner, once they learn, because I'll take you back to an example, many times ESL programs or teachers, um, they're teaching the student, the student's very interested in learning ESL, but because they never receive the foundation of reading and writing in their native language, they struggle a lot in that ESL class. 
So if the student's intention is to learn ESL, then this is the foundation. This is the base. So Leamos will be, and it's intended, for a learner who's a Spanish speaker to learn literacy in Spanish. And that just opens the doors to so many other options. And in a lot of cases, and most cases, for them are to learn English. So this will actually launch them and give them that confidence to do move on to um, English classes or ESL or other classes. Many of them move on to citizenship classes. So it just depends what the students' goals are. Great. Thanks, Patty. Um, then Erin was also wondering um, if students could actually do this program with no tutor at all. Um, I would say the course was assigned for a facilitator or a tutor to be around them because I think that just like any learner, if you're learning something that is very new to you, some feedback is necessary. So really, the tutor is there for the support. So if your program cannot provide that um, facilitation or tutoring, it will be really important that you connect them with a family member, that you do get to speak to a family member or that the learner is able to tell you, yes, I have someone at home that can give me that feedback or support that once they start learning at your program, they go home, if they can read something on the newspaper, or they can learn something uh, on a magazine or a street sign or a menu, that someone is there to give them that support. Um, that's really what it's there for, but also the writing piece. If you, uh, and then I'm saying this as an option, as a non-tutor availability, but it's really recommended. It's highly recommended to have that tutor because as an adult learner, they do need that support. But in case you cannot have that tutor, um, I'm just giving ideas of support that for the writing piece, if they're given that worksheet to take home, then someone needs to be there with them to observe how they're writing because once they're learning how to write, we want to make sure that they're writing the letters in the correct direction that's directed on the worksheet. Um, so that's how I would answer that question. Okay. Yeah, and I'd just like to add that I know um, it doesn't have to be in the same format as like a traditional class. Um, as Patty said, it's nice to just have someone available as support, whether it's, you know, if they've never we mentioned that this is a great opportunity for people not only to learn um, Spanish, but to, to read and write in their native language, but to also get access to those digital literacy skills. And so if they're having any like frustration with navigating the computer, um, I mean, there are tutorials at the beginning of Leamos, but it's just nice to have someone. So like Patty said, whether it be someone in the, in the home or at your program, um, but you don't necessarily have to be up in front of a classroom teaching. You could have several people in the same computer lab, um, but all on different lessons and modules. Um, so that's just something to think about. But I wouldn't say that it could be completely done independently at home without any support in the home as well. Correct. Okay. Um, so, the next question from is from Mary, and I think that I can answer this, but Patty, please chime in if I miss anything. Um, Mary was wondering if printing is an issue, can students write in a notebook? Um, and my response would be that because of the way the lessons in the student workbook are presented, it would be best to have to have an actual hard copy, um, but we do also um, provide printing services at an additional fee if that's something that you need. But Patty, if you know people that have had success right, doing a notebook without the actual student workbook, please correct me. Yeah, no, like you said, because the workbook is synchronized with the uh, online lessons, it introduces the, the syllables and it has a tracing, especially for them as beginning learners on how to write and has all that guidance. And it also, the workbooks do include the evaluations. So it's necessary to print. And the reason why I just mentioned that during the trial is because we don't make it available, but at least as a backup in the beginning, 
then the notebook is acceptable, but only during the trial period. But we do want them to be successful in the writing piece as well. So we do have those printing services available and you can let me know and we can have those ship out to you with the additional cost in case that's an issue. Great, thank you. Um, and then Kim was wondering if the reports are downloadable into Excel. Yes, the reports are both done, downloadable and you can view them on the screen and there's several formats that you can download that to. So yes, it's very accessible and it can be edited and cleaned up as you need it. And then I think it's either Anika or Anika, sorry if I'm pronouncing that incorrectly, I um, was wondering, do you have any stats on students that learn literacy in Spanish first versus starting in English? Yes, well, we have several testimonials um, of students that definitely I did not have like the percentage, if that's what you're looking for, for the stats. But I could tell you that students that do learn um, Leamos first, they have enrolled in ESL. And that's the way that I will have to say that's probably more than 50% of students um, that definitely enrolled in ESL and are successful. And actually very excited because it's just really exciting for them to, to be able to learn a new language. Okay, great, thank you. And then Kim was wondering, um, upon completion of the 150 hour class, should the learner be ready to join an NRS leveled beginning literacy class? Um, and I'm sorry if um, NRS in literacy, can you just describe that to me or in case you guys know that Alicia or? Yeah, what I'm not. Literacy. <laughs> Oh, national reporting system. Thanks, Kim. Okay. In literacy. And you mean for English literacy? I will say yeah. that the Spanish literacy, this Leamos course, is really intended for them to just open the doors to any goals that they have. So if they want to start learning other levels of literacy, if it's in English, it will be successful. And what I'll mention right now is that the Mexican consulate, they have programs in the United States that is called plazas comunitarias, like community plazas, where they offer elementary, middle school, and high school for Spanish speakers. So when you mention this about literacy, they are more, it does prepare them. It's like taking um, preschool and kinder before they start first grade and like even Spanish language. So this really almost launches them to start learning if they want to continue their education and complete it in Spanish, they can do that as part of the Mexican um, education. But since it really prepares them at that point where they're able to be fluent in reading and writing, I am sure that if they are taking any um, other language, if it's English or some English literacy, they will be ready for that as well. Great, thank you. Um, and then, let's see, Mary had some questions and comments, but they, they were similar to other questions that were being asked. I think that we've answered everything, but Mary, if you're still on and we haven't answered something, you can type that again. Um, Bethany was wondering, what is the minimum recommended practice time per week? Yes, as I mentioned at towards the end, the recommended time it will be six hours. Six to eight hours per week It's what's really optimal. Um, I understand that sometimes it might be less, so it really depends. That's why I like to break it down as the average of 150 hours. And depending also on the availability that you have the computers or when the students come in, it could be maybe set up two days, two hours, for them to practice um, and to be connected to the course. But yeah, I will say maximum or ideal will be three days minimum with two hours each day. So six to eight hours per week, if they can, they can do more. Okay, great, thank you. Um, and then David says, 
is the three-week free trial access ongoing? I never know when I will have a student come along that needs this. Is the trial available ongoing so that when a student comes along, we can purchase the course for the student? And my short answer would be yes. You can contact Patty. Um, you know, if you have a student at any point that comes in that thinks they're interested, um, so that you have access, so that you have access. I know some programs have gotten the free trial so that they can start someone immediately, and then they can go through whatever financial, you know, requirements of their organization processing for payment. Um, so that then they can do that at the same time to get someone started, you know, the day that they walk in if they need to or, you know, the next day. That is correct. And also I can make the trial available for you just for you to evaluate it, be ready to know what it looks like and what it feels like. And then when the students um, do come in, you just let me know when their planned start date is and I can make it available for that day and I send you all the data, their username and passwords ahead of time. So you can be ready for them and it, it is ongoing. Okay, and then I think we only have one last question unless anything else comes in um, in the next minute or so. Susan asked, can this class be taught or used in other countries? And I would say, yes, um, we, um, I know that we have someone right now in I believe Barbados that purchased it. And um, we are working with some programs in Mexico so that they can have um, subscriptions there. So really there is um, no restriction on you know where you are located to use Layamos. I don't that's know if you have anything to add to that, Patty. No, that's correct. Um, a lot of times they purchase it here and then they make it available or even they contact us directly from those countries and we communicate and by email, send them all the access to the course. So yes, we have people in Honduras, uh, Dominican Republic, um, that they're taking the course. So yes, no research. Yeah, we, um, you know, it, for those of you, if you're not aware, we are an international organization. And so, um, you know, we, we do, are having initiatives with our programs in um, various Latin American countries. Um, this webinar was more focused on the United States, but um, if you do know of any, you know, if you're in a program or work with a program in another country that may be interested, um, email Patty and talk to her about that because we can accommodate any country. Um, and so... That was, um, oh, Susan has another question. Can you teach this program if your Spanish skills are limited? And I would like to say yes, um, because you're not really teaching it, you're just really there as a facilitator. And I have a great experience of an organization that they don't have any Spanish speaking staff at their site, but what is great is the, the synergy between the student and the staff, because once that relationship established, the students are able to communicate, um, especially for the intake. They do the intake and they have been able to take all the information. They enroll the student um, and they're there because they're there to understand what they're reading. I mean, at least there's some level of understanding. So it's really more the monitoring, like I said, and the support. So if someone or if they find someone else too that is able to provide or correct when they're reading, that they mispronunciated something that they're reading because that might not be caught with a non-Spanish speaker. But as long as they have someone else around that can provide that, but as far as administration and providing the course and making it accessible, there have been success stories with that. Um, but just again, just for the student to get that individual support of uh, correcting and pronunciation, then you just need someone else, maybe a family member, someone else that can provide that. All right, thanks, Patty. Um, that's all we have for questions right now. So if you think of anything else, please just email Patty. Her contact information's up on the screen um, or give her a call. Um, and we appreciate you joining us today, and we hope that uh, you found this useful. If you, you know, have any suggestions or questions, just contact us. And if you're interested in a trial, please take advantage of that.
So I hope you all have a nice rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. I look forward to your um, emails. Bye-bye. <laughs>